Welcome to the Darkest <laughs> Timeline, episode 13, with Joe McHale and Ken Jeong, because I knew you would laugh. Jeez. I knew you would laugh. So that's why, why I said it like that. Why do you act like an 80-year-old when you introduce the show? <laughs> I can hear you. Dude, we, we need to expand our demographics, dude. We need to expand our demo. I can talk to you like I'm going to murder you. <laughs> and that's how sensitive these mics are. We are RPN. We are the opposite of NPR. So it's just... <laughs> And we have the same appeal of an anti MPO. <laughs> fresh air. With, yeah. Air fresh with <laughs> Joe McHale and Ken Jung. There's no way we can get sued. Welcome to thing. me tell don't wait, wait with Ken. Hey, you like celebrity with broken sentences? Well, check mm. out the darkest timeline. Welcome to my dislike. Only on Stitcher. <laughs> uh, that's the only people left who will air it. Yeah. Uh, Ken, it's been almost zero time since I've last talked to you. I know. We talk. Between I talk more to you. Table than read. My kids. I talk to you more than my kids. My That's wife. Very true. I, I turn the. <laughs> I, I just I call kidding. Ken and leave it open, and I fall asleep to his voice <laughs> as he talks about stuff. As yeah, I go, hey, man, I, I, I know how we could make a zillion dollars. And Joel goes, <laughs> yeah, sleep apnea. We can, I got we my can make, mask on. We can make. Hundreds of dollars. That's usually. <laughs> Joel, meet me in a Ralph's parking lot. Joel, I have an idea. Out. Meet me in a Ralph's parking lot. Socially distanced. Make a little movie. We'll ours. We're going to make a movie. We'll make a zillion dollars. Oh, you know, like, did you yeah. like Chronicle? Well, this is better. This is a Chronicle set in a pandemic. Meet me at a meet me at the Ralph's. I'm not no meet, time to explain. I'm not meeting you at a Ralph's. I'm not meeting you at a Ralph's. Oh, okay, I get it. Morning. I get it. You're you're high end. Meet me at a Gelson's. I'm you not. Know? No one knows these high. These, all right, all I'll right. Meet, Bristol Farms, you aristocrat. <laughs> I'll meet you at a Ralph's Fresh Fair. How about that? Will that be? <laughs> we'll make our make this movie. You can send it to Adam McKay and see what he thinks. He'll note it up. Okay, we talk and we drink soup. It's really up your brand, literally. Uh, McKay will love it. He will run with it. Show has been gone for five years. <laughs> that would be like me going like, let's make the goods too. <laughs> Sounds like a great title. I would, the, I would do that. You know what? I'll pitch it to Neil Brennan and we'll call it The Greats. So, okay. Yeah, that's what we'll All right. do. All right. So, Ken... All right. You texted me some things yesterday, oh, about four or five hundred of things. But <laughs> well, I know that we're gonna have a. Are guest you awake? Up, I want Are you to... awake? This is Ken. <laughs> You'd be like Joel, 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 Joel. Just question Joel. mark after my. Joel, All right, call me back. Call me back quick, quick. Quickly on this, uh, you showed some optimism as a doctor yesterday to me that okay. uh, AstraZeneca billion dollar uh, okay. uh, vaccine that they're make that they're just mass producing in hopes that it's going to work and the u.s just gave a billion bucks right it this is what this is what the government should be leaning on more is just fast tracking the vaccine uh I gave it a horrible name horrible, uh, operation warp speed but <laughs> but none, which is literally the name i mean it's like honestly operation warp speed like what you don't like star trek i yeah. mean like like what's next just kind of project flash gordon i mean it doesn't make any sense to me but i think ludicrous speed ludicrous right. speed yeah. with luda just coming in, yo, fast and furious, yo. It's oh, like a lot of different references flying. <laughs> We're missing a lot, but okay. So just so um, you, I just want. Okay. It's nice to know hope. I just want a little bit of hope because it's. I'm terrified of everything opening up again. Uh, so as but well as we should be. I mean, as well as we should be. But uh, here, here's the optimism in in Los Angeles, and this this I have to credit my wife for kind of breaking this down and and explaining it to me. Um, if you read in the LA Times, there's something called the R number, which is the reproductive uh, number. And if that R number is two, let's say, um, which it was in LA, it's above two, I believe, uh, back in March, that means for every one person that has uh, COVID-19, you could infect two, up to two other people. And so... And if the if the R number is at one, that means for every one person, that means the other person you you, you infect you, you have to potentially infect one person. Oh, okay, so. And then and this one is slight is le is slightly less than one right now, the R number. That's and, great. Which means that this is a sign that the epidemic has a chance to end. So all these are amazing 
numbers. I'm talking about LA doesn't apply to other areas right. of the country. So, so keep in mind, you know, anyone listening outside of Los Angeles. So just it's go to your local. But it's for just, there's hope yeah. because Los Angeles, there's a lot of people here. Tens a lot of, of people millions. here. And, yeah. It's, uh, and it's, it's for, one of the most populous states in in America, and right. and I and I think that I, I just think that uh, I think Gavin Newsom, Eric Garcetti has done an amazing job having everyone stay at home, shelter in place. I do think that we had geography in our favor a little bit too. Yeah, I think because we're a bit more spread out, less dense. I think we had a and lot you of factors. Live in like a hole in the ground, like a hobbit. Huh? You live in a hole in the ground like a hobbit because you're been, you've got hair on your feet. And I've been living in I've been living like a hobbit since the hangover. I think so. I don't think this is any different from me. <laughs> but then <laughs> tell me, me about tell me Friday. about the vaccine. Tell yeah, me about the vaccine. This. Okay, so Operation Warp Speed has basically funded. Um, the government has funded different pharmaceutical companies uh, for vaccine development, depending on their potential. So Moderna which has been in the news a lot, uh, Johnson & Johnson, which has also been in the news a lot, they've allocated about half a million dollars each uh, for vaccine development, uh, which is um, half a billion dollars, which is amazing. And and for AstraZeneca, which is partnered up with Oxford, which we've talked about on the that's podcast. That's that Jenner thing, right? That's the, um, yes, at Oxford, the Jenner okay. Institute, exactly. And they've, they've, They've uh, given the government's given one point two billion dollars to AstraZeneca, which is partnered up with Oscar uh, Oscar Oxen. I'm just Dear Lord. Are <laughs> I'm you drunk? My You're a doctor. I look at my TV ward. I say Oscar to me. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, but they 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 partnered up with um, with Oxford and the Jenner Institute about uh, this vaccine that's been in development for a while. Right. Because they were studying MERS or SARS? They were it? studying MERS, and exactly. And this was a vaccine designed for MERS. So it already went through uh, phase one. Yeah, and, and they've already, like, a year ahead of development. And I'm just saying a year just as a placeholder. Don't don't quote me on that. But it was way ahead of development uh, more than Moderna and, and Johnson & Johnson. So to me, having the government's faith in AstraZeneca and um, – and Oxford is very telling. And if anything, I, I really, I mean, if anything, uh, Trump should be talking about that because that's huge. And yeah. because that will help restore the economy that everyone wins with that. Right. And it, look, uh, liberals are happy. Republicans are happy. And more importantly, big party is happy. Big party is happy. And more importantly, the country is happy. And you do that, and this is what I've been leaning on since the first episode. The reason why we did this, you know, you fast track that vaccine, you pour all your money into a vaccine, good things will happen for everybody. Everybody wins, and that's something that we can all get behind. And to me, that's very exciting, yeah. and it shows. And the fact that Moderna and Johnson and Johnson are having favorable results in rhesus monkeys, and and that the, that the virus works, you know, oh, that hey, back Pedro. Oh hey! Oh hey! What's up, guys? How you doing, buddy? We're talking about that vaccine. We're talking about the uh, vaccine, uh, the fast tracking um, of the vaccine. Tracking, yeah, the, how the government is uh, fast tracking uh, this vaccine uh, that was that's really was developed in England at Oxford with the Jenner Institute and AstraZeneca. This one drug company is is um, kind of the U.S. branch of distribution, and um, medically speaking. You know, I, I feel like if the government wants to score points with the public, they should be talking about that because that is, as a former doctor, that's like the best. I mean, honestly, that's the best news I've heard medically in a long time. That uh, that the, the government has confidence. They've given twice as much money to this drug company than Johnson and Johnson and Moderna. Yeah. And, and Pedro, just so you know, Ken has only said as a former doctor five times so far in the show. So that's really good for our, nice. our podcast. My, it's I, I wrote down. I wrote down a question. Um, yes, please. You, were, you 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 were a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, now you can see why he got that's out as of far, it. That's as far as I got. This is uh, a. <laughs> well, the thing is, even when he was a doctor, Pedro people, Pedro uh, has has found the rub. I'm actually an ex biology minor, <laughs> so I'm not even a doctor. I haven't. I really. <laughs> I just been saying I'm a doctor just so I can get a podcast up. I really feel it's a good career move if I talk about being a physician 
and I feel like I, I, I have the, the goodwill of the public, and I feel like I can, I can squash that goodwill by just spewing out medical knowledge. And How honestly, do you spell doctor when you write it down? Oh, with a K. And uh, D O K T O D O K T A H. Yeah, T O D O K T A H R. And by the way, I'm working on a rap album. That's my name, Doctor. And I'm working <laughs> as my rap. That's my rap name, Doctor. And I'm working with Lil Fizz and Omarion. Hello, like the best. My name is Ken, and I'm here to say I like to rap in a very cool way. But yeah, going back to my record label, no Here vaccine. Go. Going, going back to my vaccine, the vaccine. I, I I do believe just the fact that three or four companies are, and there's one company in China too that has vaccines in development that showing that are showing promise. To me, it shows a what you know, Joel, as well that this virus is genetically stable. Although there are small mutations, but they're predictable mutations where a, a vaccine can anticipate that so um so you mean, a, you mean a lab can anticipate the a lab can anticipate the mutate if there are actually favorable mutations that may make the virus weaker so um so there there's a lot not to not to get into the weeds of it all the fact that many companies are saying there's promise um makes me intuitively feel good although there's, there's a, a lot general of, swell of hey this looks like we yeah. can work with in the last and, in the last two weeks, right? In the last two weeks, yeah. Some good news. Yes, yes. And, and we were just saying when you came in, yeah. this uh, this company or uh, is it Jenner? The Oxford study they're well, making. It's the, it's, the Ox, it's Oxford University, the Jenner Institute. And they 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 have already they were already working on a COVID cousin of MERS, right? MERS, yeah. We've already said, and so they just basically pushed that into COVID nineteen study, mm-hmm. and they're already in. I think there's three companies doing phase two, the human trials. And there, so they're already least, there. At least three companies doing in, in the United States, I mean, that are that are going to be doing phase two trials. I mean, there are typically three, possibly four phases of vaccine development. Phase one, see if there's side effects. And so right. w- every every company is past that. And then phase two is you, you test it out on hundreds of people and basically see if it works uh, on a limited basis. And phase three you see if it works with thousands of people and it's phase three where a lot of a lot of these vaccines will fall out of favor if it's not working for a majority of people or everybody then it's not worth then it's not worth giving so there's a lot of risk involved with phase three because now you're you're really spending the money but everybody you know to me it's it's really important whatever vaccine wins that there's global cooperation because you know that to me is uh I don't know. I know medicine a little bit, but I don't know anything about about business or economics. So I, I true. that so that it so I worry about. Um, I just worry about like you know how monetization is going to get in the way yep. in favor. But, you know, but I, so I think you, everybody is going to. I think everybody has even big business will think it's better for business to have a moral responsibility because you can make money down the line. You can always yeah. streamline that vaccine. Oh so, yeah. I think everyone's going to have this moral responsibility to to do the right thing. I, I, Just yeah. so you know, Pedro, yeah. uh, Ken is not the most. He's very good at being uh, like skeptical, and I'm now complimenting you, Ken, because you never come on here going like, "Isn't it great?" There, you know, he's never. Uh, he's never. He's like a good researcher or a doctor, where he's pessimistic and he's like, and he's like, things Realistic. don't. You know, yeah. yeah. And so, so yeah. And, and so my wife is, is my wife time. is still a physician. My wife is still a physician. So it, it, I, I really run everything. It's almost like an investigative journalist where you got to have a sort I like, I read it myself and then you, you, you know, I get a, a very authentic source. So everything it's, it's, I say before the podcast, I run it by my wife and just make sure it's that so it's, much, it's so much better than having absolutely no information, but being completely negative like myself. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Like no real understanding, but just <laughs> sort of catastrophizing anyway. Yeah. Right. I think that's no, why. It's understandable. Yeah, that's why on Apple uh, TV, Contagion is always trending. Uh, I like how when I you look at it, it's like hey, your, your movie is right up there. Scoob is always right up there. And they're like, hey, Contagion is still available, guys. Should we right. should we, we freak ourselves watch, out further? We can watch Contagion after Scoob. It's a perfect double. It's a perfect double. After scoop. After scoop. 
<laughs> Mommy, why are we watching this movie? Yeah. <laughs> that man's wife just died. Don't worry. That's, it gets really funny later. That's hilarious. But but getting back to Pedro, or P-squared as I like to call him. Oh, um, you know, I come from a family of doctors. Really? Well, my dad. What, what, what did he What did he practice? A uh, gynecologist. He's a fertility uh, fertility doctor. That's awesome. Yeah. Where's where your Where's your family from? He's We're from Chile. Right. Um, this is This is a This is a. It gets a little. It gets a little epic. But I was I was born there. My sister and I were born there. I have an older older sister. In Santiago. Sister. In Santiago, yeah. In Santiago. In <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. In San Diego. I'm. Um, you know I. I, All right. I, sometimes I actively, it. sometimes I actively make the decision to be like, <laughs> you yeah, San, right, right. Santiago or, right. or Chile <laughs> or, get it. or and just get so it, that Pedro. somebody doesn't go, oh, Santiago. Oh, <laughs> look, we get it. San Diego near Coronado Beach. We get it. We're on just the same way you here. Just wait till you hear how Ken says North Carolina where he grew up. <laughs> it's anyway. So you Santiago. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, it was a, it was a. A, a dangerous time in Chilean history. So they were they were um, very young and uh, left wing students, and they helped some people. And so then they got into trouble, and we so they they got out. We got out um, after being in hiding for like six months. I mean, no, I was a baby, you know. Wow. And um, I was nine months when we ended up with asylum in Denmark. And um, and he had a yeah, and and he. So and and we ended up in the states because he got hired into um, a lab in uh, San Antonio, Texas, UT San Antonio, and we lived there for and 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 he. Um, it, it's the strangest thing because I always now that I'm older because my father went back to Chile um, 25 years ago, in in '95. And, um, and with with my mother and my two little brothers, gosh, it's a long story. It, it, it constant. It starts to. It just expands more and more. And no, I it's way better uh, than Kent's history. Go ahead. <laughs> but basically, my basically my sister and I, we were born in Chile and then raised in the states. And my parents had two more kids here and then went back to Chile. And so my little, so my sister and I were born in Chile, raised in the states. My little brothers were born in the States raised in Chile and in going to see uh, m my mom passed away many years ago, but in going to see my father, um, I'm always grilling. him exactly like, now tell me again, you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. you, this, you know, how did it, how, you know, that day and you found out that you somebody was down in the lobby of the hospital asking your name and then you snuck out the back and then you went and you got mom and then you did this and, yeah. you, and then how did it, you know and i and i make them go go through it because growing up in the states guys i was like you know going to public schools in san antonio we had hbo by the time i was like seven years old renting vhs's because they couldn't find a babysitter getting pissed off because he wouldn't let me watch the breakfast club you know, <laughs> that kind of and, and yet and yet there and just, you know, and, and 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 they had gone they had gone through this. They had gone through this whole thing that only as an adult, I insist on kind of constantly unraveling as much as I as much as I as much as I can, as much as the story of it. Do you, think it's cause he, oh, go ahead. Do, do you think it's because he doesn't want to talk about it or uh, he doesn't like he it's fuzzy to him or do, why do you think he's been vague or is he been vague and just now you're asking him you know it, that, that's a good question uh, he 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 doesn't he doesn't get uncomfortable talking about it at all i think especially now and he remembers a lot or you know all of it in, in, in pretty good details it's the way that i assemble it in my mind and how i how much i try to organize exactly what happened um, and am I getting it right? You know what I mean? Um, no, I mean, I, I think as a, as a child, you know, uh, of, uh, of immigrants myself, there's, you, there's always, it's funny how <clears throat> when you get older, you, you realize what your parents went through. Just like you said, you, when you're going literally grow, growing up and not getting HBO or not having access, that's like the worst problems. And then when your parents, um, you know, the, the, the transitions and obviously yours was, 
it, it is so uh, life and death stressful, you know, uh, it, it kind of there sometimes for me, there's almost like a guilt of like, man, I what am I complaining about? Like I and, and sometimes I still have maybe we always call it Korean guilt. And uh, and and I'm, I'm always like guilty sometimes of feeling why? Why am I so stressed out about this? This isn't me as a kid, you know, and much less now, which is even worse. But it's like, man, I, 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 when I think about my parents' stories, like, oh, I got nothing, you know, and I got nothing to worry about. And then I've, I've had the exact same experience with my own father, who was a Korean War veteran, and I would ask him about life and death situations. And, and you know, it, it's something that, like you said, he, my father says it matter of factly, but my frame of reference has always been growing up in America, but I mean, just, just, you know, a shout out to your parents and your, your father for not only being uh, a, a physician, but a humanitarian. And then, and, and, and he's a pain the in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is this where the story was leading? Oh, yeah. sorry. Can oh, I thought it was going can... somewhere epic. This I thought... is all getting to like okay. I'm mad right. at him. We're not talking. Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> got it. You, can you right. do a shout out on a, like, like a, the, what your next doctor was record? Your plus ten? one at that Vanity Fair party. Yep, I got. It. Yep, I get it. No, no, that that that's 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 how that's how it should. Yep. Just kidding. I love you, Dad. Te quiero <laughs> yes. mucho. Te quiero mucho. Oh, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, just kidding. Big fan of the just kidding. Shout out to San Diego, California. The beaches <laughs> are great. Coronado. <laughs> Comic Con, I'm yeah. on it, dude. For minorities, we get it. <laughs> uh, Pedro uh, Pinochet stopped. He stopped being in power in like '90, something like that. Or he uh, late '80s. He died in. I I, I should have looked this up, but I think it was right around there. He, he died. He died recently. I mean, two, 2000. He, he was arrested. In, he was in. He was arrested in Europe. So I think and, power stopped in 1990. I think. It was it 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 was uh, 9-11-73 when they bombed uh, Allende's the presidential palace and went into a military dictatorship that lasted about seventeen years. Which the U.S. So backed, like, right? When yeah. The US backed them. Yeah. And the, the yeah. Do you really want to get into all that? No, I mean th- when you think about Chile's history, it's like they they still. Like the numbers are like, oh, 9,000 people were killed. And they're like, no, no, no. It's probably around 30,000. And then another figure came out. They were like, it's 45,000. And these are all people that disappeared and were being flown over the ocean and pushed out of planes. It was yeah. insane, the government. And so I think people, you know, like the, I think people I now don't understand. Like when you, like your dad sneaking out of a hospital, that was there was two ways that was going to end. It's like he either got out of that hospital that moment or he might have never been heard from again. Well, what's, what's, it, what's interesting um, for us, my father's always reminding me and kind of downplaying uh, the drama of it. And he's like, well, remember, you know, we were middle class. Like we, you know, so mm. we were much in less, we were much less vulnerable Um um, than 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 so many of the the the, the working class and, and the poor people that they were trying to uh, you know protect and 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 fight on on and on behalf of, um, which is you you know which is always the case. But it did it did it did cross over to a point where you know journalists were going missing and art you know like very important and and uh, recognized artists and. So I think that my father expected to um, talk to the right people and be okay or protected. And that did not turn out to be the case. And it was like, you need to fucking hide. And we'll, and in the meantime, we'll figure something out. And, um, and they did. And it was a very specific like design of, um, identifying that at the Venezuelan embassy, um, one guard would exchange shifts and get on the same bus that the other guy was getting off of. And they had recognized that that was where their routine. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So there would just be this little window where they could... Um, Slip into the embassy? 
climb the wall. Oh man. <laughs> With a baby. Wow. No, I was, I, my, we were, I, it was, it's, it's, it's actually, it's kind of sad. I can't imagine. I, I hate thinking about what, what it would have been like for my mother because my sister would have been turning three and I was like four months old. And so she had to, our mom yeah. had to separate from us and, 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 and hide for like six months. And, and then once they got into the Venezuelan embassy, her family would come, you know, like hold the baby from the, you know, the, and, and, and they could look at us from the upstairs window of the embassy where they were staying. And, oh and we were gosh. like, yeah, I know, I know. I'm like, no. And please. then, and then we come here and I grow <laughs> up a spoiled fucking rat. <laughs> American dream, my friend. And that's like, like, you know, I can't even imagine. You know, I'm partying. Swim partying with Tim Duncan of the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. And I'm going swimming with David Robinson. And that's how we won the 1999 NBA championship. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams come true. My parents consume, you know, and, and my dad being a doctor, he, he loves, he loves movies that's how I got into it because he would take us to the movies like three times a week and wow. see whatever he wanted to see. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was the, uh, what was the craziest movie that you saw as a child with your dad? <laughs> there were so many. <laughs> <laughs> there were, just, we're going eye, to nine though, and man. a half weeks again. I want to see it one more time. I, want, I remember seeing, I remember seeing first blood. <laughs> Mm. Oh, that's, that's in awesome. the movie theater. That's was, awesome. One of the I, I remember movies. every every bit of it because it right. was so, it was such a good movie. Right. And um, Brian um God rest you know, like Pink Floyd's so The Wall. He was like, "It's animated." That guy cuts his nipples off during it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you ever um, terrified? Did you ever walk out like changed? Where you're like, I should not have seen that. I remember there was this really bizarre movie with um. Kirk Douglas and Farrah Fawcett. Wow, and it, 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 that's amazing. It was it was probably like post. Um, what movie was that? I was going to say the morning after. That's not Kirk Douglas though. Uh, and that's and uh, it's not uh, Farrah Fawcett. No, it's, it's Jane Fonda. Fonda. Is that the one? Or? Jane Fonda. That's Jane Fonda. Yeah. Okay. I remember that it was just this. This it was like post two thousand one and Alien. So they were. I don't. I think it was a made-for-TV movie. No, was this it? was a movie. I saw it in the movie theater, and it was a oh, movie. Joel, shut and up. This machine, this machine. It was like an AI going against the humans. Really, really. Um, I mean, yep. it was. It was like a huge disaster. Are you looking it up? Yeah, I, I know what's coming. Can I look it up? Yeah, Harvey Keitel is the uh, is the villain. Yes. And it's called. Like <laughs> my friends right now, if they're listening, they're gonna be so mad. That Looking it up, it's well, called Sideways. Called. Sideways with Paul Giamatti. Yes, and not Sideways. <laughs> oh, I, I bet. Very uh, disturbing. Uh, Andrew Sarah, Sarah Fawcett was so good in Sideways. Very when, good. When the robot um, uh, uh, kills her. When the robot in Sideways comes, I know they deleted <laughs> in the final cut. I'm not an idiot. You didn't see it in the final print, but I saw a rough cut. It was amazing. Yeah, was but that bottle it? of uh, it. Uh, here it is. It's called The Descendants. Saturn 3. Saturn 3. Yeah. Saturn 3. Saturn 3. Th exactly. Saturn and that kind of freaked you out. I remember that one kind of freaked me out. I never saw it again because it was like a machine. And and, 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 and I, I think he, he thought that Watership Down was a, a, a kid's movie. And we went and we saw that. And, <laughs> and, and I remember, and I'll never forget, like the, 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 um, one of the rabbits having the vision, the premonition, and the field turning into blood. And the rabbits just like ripping each other apart. And then we would go see Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> Which is more, way Dude, more disturbing. That is a hard way thing. more I've never seen one, right? Am I right, guys? That movie you know, is that incredible. Movie. It oh doesn't... my god! I you get killed by spandex. It's like horrible. <laughs> Just no. I I, I want to show my kids that in about five years, and th they're going to be like, "What was happening in 1979?" What Magic. was going on? Everything. <laughs> Everything, Everything was happening. All right. ELO, Olivia Newton John. Dig it. They Relax. were coming out of a mural and then roller skating off with trails of colorful light. 
Yeah. It was, here's a little fun. And your, and the, how old are your kids? You haven't shown it to them yet? No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I got to pace that stuff out. That's uh, abuse. No, I, I would rather <laughs> show them first blood than Xanadu. He uh, just shows best of the soup on a loop. That's what Joel you. does. It's thank like, you. And it's I show goat. my guest star from CSI Miami. I mean, like, hey, you know. <laughs> You look, I here's buddy. Here's again. the truth, though. Like <laughs> they couldn't have put Scoob up fast enough, and then Good and movie. then. Oh my God, I love that one actor who's supporting uh, Mark Wahlberg in that movie. It's amazing. I love it. I'm a big fan. It's huge. Number one on VOD. Not that I know these things. I'm just a big fan of the movie. I gotta hang one up. Of the and... Oh, yeah. no, 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 go. I'll be good, I'll be good, I won't talk about myself. No, anymore. no, Sorry. no, I gotta hang up and go, see. I gotta hang up and watch Scoob. Oh, look at that. What a promotion. I think <laughs> one of my, I think my 12 year old even said, is Ken in everything, dad? And I was like, Ken is in a lot of stuff. Wow. And Does Ken ever say no? <laughs> is that what your kids, are? that's what my kids ask. <laughs> You're like me. You're like me. <laughs> it's, um, but no, like. By the way, I have to say uh, thank you oh, no, so much you for oh, yeah. doing Go the ahead. table read. For it, you are the brightest. You are my favorite part of that table read oh, God. because it it was. That's saying a lot because Ken's line. usual favorite part is his own. But go ahead. Yeah, usually I'm just a fan of my line. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, it's a magical line, and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and but for. I'm so glad that w w they they kept in that part where you were breaking because that honestly that's what we do on the set every single day on we 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 the the joy of going to community was just um, having a laugh every day for six years and that's what I've never had that experience before nor since of just just having so much unmitigated fun and and i felt like you Wait, the joy you of discovering the work for dr ken you just couldn't be happier during that time say it again, say it again. <laughs> <laughs> no but i think what ken is saying is, is that you you did the thing that we did would do when we were trying to get through scenes and it was just uh, and uh it made me it, so i for those of you who have not seen the table read there's a line about pierce's sperm being delivered to each cast member and Pedro filled in for Walton Goggins, who played the role, and he brilliantly, perfectly, without breaking, making it. This is he's upset that he broke. That's perfect. the best part about this whole thing is that he's he like Pedro's like not happy about it. The whole <laughs> thing was upsetting. <laughs> I don't. I don't well, you live in an alternate reality. It went, well, you were no. so funny. <laughs> so we were starting. We're, this is going to be this is going to be a big jump. But, you know, uh, back in the day, being a little kid whose dad is taking him to movies all the time and, and there's cable TV in the house babysitting us predominantly, it was the, you know, this is the 80s. We were not very supervised. So then, you, you know, cut to that's that's how I'm shaped. That's how I'm disturbingly developed. So I fucking love community. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God bless you, man. It's my jam. I've told Joel like a thousand fucking times, by the way. Um, and he has it in writing. <laughs> when I ran into him, you know, like at a fancy party where there's people way more famous than us. I'm like, hi, I'm Pedro. I love community. You know, that kind of <laughs> So and I was like, oh my, and I was like, Pedro, what, the kind of um, visceral sort of um, anxiety, the intimidate, the, it, I was completely overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed and it, my body went into this, the back of my neck was on fuck and I was like and the technology and I was like it's not work get, just be quiet they want you and just listen just fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's what the whole thing felt like to me <laughs> it I I, I well, and that's hey. not fishing and you're not allowed to be like no you were great I'm just telling you anecdotally that's what it was and I don't want to hear another thing about it. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I, te- uh, I, I texted him, Ken, <laughs> how much he crushed it. And he just wrote back, Gillian put you up to this. <laughs> Gillian, no, I wrote back, Gillian told you to write that. <laughs> he told you this, right? That's... Well, that's why, that's why the world loves you, man, because... You guys went into. You, guys you have the soul into- of an artist. I I I, I understand. Yeah, you, you <laughs> have a, you have a soul of an artist, and it's. Look at it, his face, Ken. What? <laughs> that was his face when you. That's the soul. That's your. That's your face soul. That's your artist. Rest. It's. I mean, I'm the same way. When I was on Big a Mama's lazy House Three, when You're I was on Big Mama's House Three as a postman, you know, in the cold open of, you know, and uh, I was For on what? Vampire Suck, uh, you know, I had the same soul of an artist. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta do these lines justice because I just bought a house and I, I have the same thing. I'm like, oh my god, you know, how would this character feel? I don't know. I haven't read the script, which is why I improvise. I, I, I get it. Yeah. I get you, brother. We're, Pedro, we're, we're like he called spirits. me one time and he said, "Do you think Warhol would play an animated snail?" <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Absolutely." All we're right. Following. Footsteps. And that is how Turbo was made. I mean, there's all these things, choices that inform me. Just the work. I mean, it's so great to be a, on a podcast with a fellow artist, and it's finally for a change and. We just feel it, and uh, as a kid, I would go to these. My my parents would take me to just great movies that would freak me out, like Ernest Goes to Camp. All yeah. the amazing Ernest, movies. Er, it informed all me. All the Ernest. All movies. the Ernest movies informed me of my choices. Joel, we were, we were grown ups by the time the Ernest movies came around. Let's be fucking honest. <laughs> yeah. And Ken, you're older than any of us. You were in <laughs> graduate school. You're right. I did test when, for Ernest. I didn't get it. it. Let's here. move on. <laughs> Okay, but, I but, know I know that you look, you can't tell uh, someone like Pedro how great he did because I know, he's just I, 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 yeah, I'll just I do the same thing where I'll be like, yeah. see you later. I can't. I know what I and uh, but you know that you trended on Twitter <laughs> after that. On I Twitter. took the Ken took a actually photo well it and sent it to me and I'm like, I'm sending this to you. And of course, in Pedro's mind, he's probably going, oh, because I fucked up. Because I couldn't get through a sperm line, and it was like it was the greatest moment of the whole thing. I I I, res- I, I, res- I respect that. There is a, and everyone's no one, un- everyone's under the impression that I hadn't like I was reading it a hundred percent cold. It's not true. Right. I had read it. Right. Yeah. You I had see read the it. episode. I saw the episode. <laughs> yes. I saw the episode when I was watching the show, and then I watched it again because I wanted to understand the. Or remind myself the tone of his performance. I read the script before we, and it yeah, didn't no, make a difference. No, what? There was there was something on Community that you played kind of, it per you played it perfectly. All right, all right. To, oh, okay, well, there's no. something on there's something guys, on Community. We referenced this season two where I I'm on the show. I I'm a series regular and I read the I read the script and just so you I, know, I had an unusable Ken tape. Had to say that every morning he I'm walked, on, he, he would go, I had to, I'm on the show. I had I'm a, a series regular. Then he'd step on set. That's my, that's, well, that's what my lawyers told me to say. And <laughs> and then there been and I there there was one run where I just couldn't get through it and and it's it's made the blo- the blooper reels on the DVDs and it was an hour of me even though I'm giggling, I I, I had a panic attack and oh, yeah. it, and it, I really felt. Like you know, I, I came home, I was like, we didn't even get one good take without me slightly breaking, and they didn't use it in the final cut. And I was, I, I felt bad that I let people down. And I, I you know, that I, it, it's 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 terrifying when you're actually in this yeah. jag was, of a panic attack. I don't know. It's like, and I, yeah, and but it was one of the, yeah, I mean, but Ken, it was one of the most fun days of shooting because it was fun, it but, was so but you funny. know, when you're a director, when you're a producer, and you you're just like wasting hours. I mean, I'd, Hangover Three was I was I was doing okay. something with Zach. Again, it was with the name where, drop. No, Todd Todd got so mad at me because give I, it, give I, it. I was just looking at Zach and I would just start laughing, and then and then Todd, everybody, Bradley, Ed, they're looking at me, just dude, don't don't, because they just know it's gonna be an hour, and and Todd's like on a mega, but Ken, don't. <laughs> Don't and it's not the problem with that is you know when someone says don't do it you're good yeah that's a problem when that's the part yeah yeah Uh, and and just so you know Pedro when Ken was trying to stop himself from breaking the way he does it is by saying dead babies over and over again 
He goes, dead babies, dead babies, dead babies. So he can, this is his logic. I'm going to imagine dead I said, babies, yeah, I said, and dead that babies, will stop me from laughing. And, and by the way, <laughs> it was a pregnancy arc, by the way. The whole thing yes. was a pregnancy. And so it just goes against, it was so dark. <laughs> so, because Shirley was pregnant, <laughs> but potentially with my baby, and I kept saying, dead babies, dead babies, dead babies, and everyone's looking at him. It's like, oh, man, nothing. Nothing got me there. Oh man, I it, I, I get I, it. I, they call it what do they call it? Corpsing, breaking, corpsing, corpsing. I don't know why the the English call it corpsing. No, I, I, yes, yes, court like no kind idea. of negative thoughts to get you through. And actually, you know, this is something I've never talked to with a lot of actors. So the, my favorite moment ever as an actor was was the fifth season where I I cried for the first time on camera. I'm not I'm not professionally trained. And That's and I was in and I looked at I don't know if you remember this Joel it was you John Oliver and Yvette and to get me to cry I had well there was a great email from Dan Harmon that made me cry in a great way that was just really nice words and then I looked at you Joel you won't remember this and before you uh, they yelled action I said Joel I I get teared up right now I was like I just want you to know, I love you very much boom and then action and then I just started I, you, I know you don't remember that but later that night you texted me and you said. That was just like the best I've ever seen you do. It was a bear down for midterms episode. But I yeah. looked at you in particular and I said, I'm dude, like, I love you very much. And then boom, just went and, and it just got me there. I don't know. There's like a pod. <laughs> for midterms episode. Watching that tonight. Yeah. No, it was a real. And we get, and we get notes. From, we get notes from Pedro afterwards. Honestly, it wasn't that good, Ken. It wasn't. That great. <laughs> you know I what? I, I was like, I, hmm. I revisited it. You, you I talked it, it up. You talked really it up. We fucked up. up. Kind of milked it too much. Um. Speaking, speaking of tears, yeah. I want to. I don't want this to go without while we no. have Pedro, because I know you wanted me to bring this up about how much you love Game of Thrones, <laughs> and about how much. You loved Prince Oberon. This and this is an in joke. Everybody, no, this talk about me. It's talking about me because um, I have like these really sweet Game of Thrones T-shirts from Warner Brothers. It was during the Hangover days, and I would wear it everywhere. Winter's coming. It's just like the the best felt cotton T-shirt, and I would walk around everywhere. Everywhere I go, dude, awesome. Everyone, dude, awesome. I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones, and I was like, <laughs> You're kidding. dude. Dude, I've worked with Maisie Williams on the movie. Like, I've worked with people on Game of Thrones, but I'm just like, I, I just didn't get around to it. My wife has read the book. Like, yeah, and I, they're like, dude, bro. I mean, A-listers will come up, bro, dude. Oh, man, man, good on you, man. Good on you. I'm like, yeah, right? And then, and uh, but it, it was, it, you know, what what really was they amazing. They have soft T-shirts. They have, on. it's the yeah. best show on television and the best T-shirts, okay? <laughs> And, and how that, would I mean, you know it's the best that's show? That's a on Ken John guarantee. You've never seen it. You've never seen. Uh, how would you know? How would you know it's the best show? Anecdotally, on Joel. Anecdotally. Oh, and anec anecdotes count. If you if the government is too believed, anecdotes count. What? Anecdotes matter. Where were you looking? <laughs> what was that? It, it, look, I just I live right hey, underneath sixteen hundred pen, like right so what here. What he's just saying go, is that you he, guys you're, don't even you can't even, you guys don't watch TV. You don't have time. <laughs> That that you that work. You have true. twelve kids. It's like yeah, you're married. It's you know. For me, but, it's all I got. But for you, I did. You've I, got an iPad that kind of works sometimes. Hey, yeah. great. Right. There is a great. Uh, there is a. I, I did. Uh, I did my research and I did do. I watched your. Uh, there the. I, I love the GQ um, act, interview with actors segments of like iconic characters and I, and you were amazing on that and I watched. Have you ever Fuentes been asked to do that? And Law and Order. Yeah, I mean, but to see you starting out like a mentalist. Like, you no know, mentalist, exactly. It was the Good Wife, and just to see your work was so inspiring as an actor. Where just really to reach off. the heights that you had, and then. My favorite thing ever is when you're describing um, your death scene in Equalizer 2, and it, it made me laugh out loud. And you're like, guys, this is a reference to – what would you say? Never mind. And it made me <laughs> so hard because the pattern of death was similar you're to Game of Thrones. puncturing my eye out. Dude, it made me laugh so yeah. hard. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and you always want to try to, like, measure – whether it's an inflated sense of self or if you're being 
practical and and and, and helpful. And and I, I remember being like, well, you're mm, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, that's what you said in the interview. I, you know what? I what? Ah, don't worry about it. Because it was your hero. It was working with Denzel. It was working with everybody. And it was... What are we going to bring up like a seven-episode role yeah. with Denzel Washington? It was like, you can fucking, you can fucking, you know... I'm um, high, guys. P squared over here. Bumping on a couple of things. Act three. Hear me out. Were you were you shooting The Mentalist at the same time you shot Game of Thrones? Because all no. this stuff was 2014. So I got, so I got Game of Thrones... And um, shot it, the whole thing, and then came back to L.A. and couldn't get a fucking two-episode role on right. Ars Nova. I'm not Ars. What is it called? Terra Nova. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ars good- Nova, even worse. <laughs> it's a good show. It's hard to get. I tested three times. Jeez. You know, I I couldn't get a I couldn't get another CSI or you know, right. And, um, and then the mentalist was the first gig that I was, you know, able to able to get so that I could keep paying the bills. Right, right. And um, and then and then Game of Thrones came out. Uh, and that guess, in the spring of 2014. Right. Mm. And I was back in New York, and it was cool. It was really cool. You had you had said though in the interview how when you got to England, they. They didn't know if you were confirmed for the part, and then your your reps had said you. It was like HBO said you were confirmed. Yeah, what was that? David and Dan, yeah, had wanted to make sure I, that I understood that I wasn't coming out for a screen test. They, I was going out to Belfast, right, right, to meet them, and I was left under the impression that this would be the final stage of this audition process. Oh wow! And they wanted to do like costume fittings and talk to me about the part and then get and and and, and send me to london and, and get a cast of my head and and oh you know because they were going to squish it and stuff right and had me sit down with the wait your character dies the, yeah. <laughs> Shit. by the world's strongest one of man. the very one of the very few characters that dies on that show it's a rare <laughs> yeah, yeah i know novel. everyone that's why i got so that's why i got so much attention because yeah because everyone rare yeah. event. i know everyone lives that <laughs> yeah, should be the subtitle like, of game of thrones game of thrones like, everyone lives ex- yeah, yeah. yeah you know like one of the cast of thrones, friends live in life live in life live and let live i say you know <laughs> <laughs> That, that's how I would write the script, which is why I'm not invited ever near a Game of Thrones set. Wait, even though so I have you're getting fittings, you're getting your head cast, and you're are you you're going like, what? Why are you fucking with me like this? I didn't know what to. So I tried my best not to give everything like decades, decades long context. But basically, I I I I, I was auditioning like right out of college, which I graduated from in 97. And I just was trying oh. going after, you know, a beer commercial or a, a law and order or a that. huge move, a, a role that would change my life. And, and so you just get to the point where you, I don't know, you, you didn't, I, I didn't know what to ask. I didn't want to yeah. embarrass myself by, 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 um, by uh, overstepping and and or or be asking, so does this mean I have the part? What what's going on? And it's it, it it's also a testament to Dan and Dave in terms of like they're they're they'll never change. They're just kind of like really they they make you feel really comfortable and they have a very um uh at least externally of very kind of relaxed and comforting and it didn't occur to them to, they didn't realize that I didn't know basically I mean I just didn't know and I didn't know how to ask and I until I was done with fittings and a stunt rehearsal and, and a conversation <laughs> with the director that was going to be directing most of the episodes that I was in and a creative conversation with him about it and everything and I, 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 and I guess what I mean to say in so many experiences of getting close to things and the kind of talk and the way the things that they say that, that really bring your hopes up and, and make you, you know, 
oh, shit, I got this. You know, I got this job. And then the next day they're like, ah, something happened. They went somewhere. They went another time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, kind of constantly. So I guess it's that kind of uh, trauma. I guess. Well, I, I, I just, it just shows, I just think that's the, yeah, that, that's part of the, that journey, you know, it's that, it's that journey of being there and then not, I mean, it just, so the fact Ken, that you. Ken's missed out on so many things that. I know he was talking about beer commercials. At oh, I'm so point, sorry. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I did too. And it, they changed my life, the ads and the beers. And um, hello, I just Brought felt like. Brought you by the- Heineken Light. <laughs> Heineken. <laughs> I mean, Heineken Guinness. changed my life. Um, it, it, whatever, whatever. Uh, but um, but no, I I do know it, it, it's that feeling of like, is this happening? And and then to happen so dramatically in Belfast, and it just it it just everything must be so sublime when you think of that that time. It's that watershed moment, and and you alluded to that in the interview. It's like this watershed moment, and not only your career, but it felt like lifetime. You know, just it it's almost like this gave you. Um, I, not you. I'm just projecting my own insecurities, but it's, it, it gives you that confidence. If anything, it's almost like that confidence. It's like, okay, okay. If if yeah. if, if, if they say I can do it, I can do it. You know, it's that kind of. I I think that we all. You know, I'm still waiting for that moment. But yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, you had me until um, I never gave, never got me, never, never got that confidence thing. <laughs> He's still stewing about a table read we did over Zoom. He's still <laughs> upset about it. He won't let us say anything nice about it, Ken. I, I mean, there's, there's. Are you sure you're not Korean? And because it was that, funny there, too there, because there's a I part finished, of that that I relate You guys to. went so when we finished the reading, and then you guys had to go in and do uh, uh, interviews with Variety, and then you know continue on to your podcast. And there was so much that you guys had to do after, and you know, I was, I was like, okay, bye. And then I was like, oh, you're saying you're just alone. You left the meeting. <laughs> I, that's amazing. I know what you're saying. It's like you left the meeting. Bye. Hours go by, hours go by, and then I and then I send like a a wave emoji to Gillian, just like hi. And Gillian's like, not now, talking to press. And I was like, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I wrote, I'm sorry. And she called me back, and she was like, Hey, sorry, we're you know, sorry, I I would have called you so much sooner. That was so great. And I was like, No, Gillian, uh-huh. I'm really sorry. And she was like, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Gillian's great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably the best Gillian impression I've that ever heard. That is the most heard. accurate Gillian. Oh impression. God, you were great. <laughs> that's it, how I, I I get it though, man. And, and, and just looking at it from your lens, imagine leaving that that Tabor read feeling the way you did, and then everyone's laughing all together, and then it's that Zoom, that very cold button, our red button of leave meeting, and then. Like you're just didn't even couldn't even find the button. I shut <laughs> the fucking computer closed. Yeah, that's when you yeah. I was like, ah. <laughs> well, I I want you to know in in terms of in terms no, no, of don't the, even try the, 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 the kind of the sh- arc of the I mean in you terms of community won't. it's it's really. It you brightened whether you know this or not. You you truly brighten up all the fans' days. I mean that's big, it was all out of love because community fans are. That's all the it, comments. All the comments, all the comments on my was Instagram. he was the he goes page many people, like that guy from the Mentalist was amazing. I thought if you if you ever saw if you ever saw Talk Soup, wouldn't you think that like Joel would be some bitchy like not nice guy? I am, and he's such a nice guy. Well, the tricks of editing, right? Right, Andrew? <laughs> like, are you trying to... If you're, like, this? standing... If you're standing there and, like, telling... Like, and being sort of, like, witty and, 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 and doing jokes and, like, reading everything and all the Maybe. current things that are happening on, or, and being funny about it, wouldn't you think that he wouldn't be sort of a... Uh, I don't know, like... Uh, Dick? No. I thought you would be, yeah. No, Joel is truly... Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I, the, the thing that Joel doesn't like Go in real in real life, I'm not. This is no, it's very true. The thing Joel doesn't like is a comp. He 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 actually. I'm not saying I'm not saying. I mean, I'm just saying you're a nice guy. It's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there. Oh, dude, he zinged you. Come back, dude. It was a zing. It was a protracted zing, Joel. Please, Joel, come back. He went to pee. Stop. Counting your money, just come back. Well, you know that's gonna take forever. 
Yeah, I know. He tells me it takes forever to count his money and, and pee at the same time. But actually, this is great because we're fellow artists. We're fellow soulmates talking yes. to each other. Big Mama's House 3, Game of Thrones. So we have a lot in common. Um, <laughs> in terms of I, I do want to like okay. because like the rest Still of the a lot world, better. Oh, God. I was just on a roll, Joel. Just this trans out pivoting to pandemic journalism here and uh oh you know, I slow my roll but it i'd be remiss to say you obviously are hero in our family because we all love the mandalorian and i know you get this all the time i but i've always how what is the challenge of of, of doing that whole series except for one scene one brief scene you know in that mask and and, and in that body of armor and is that liberating does that feel constraining at times a little bit of both you know, it's both. It's both. It's yeah. both. There, there, there were because sh- shooting stuff, especially something like that, is is so technical and it can take a while. Yeah. And thank God there's other guys in the suit. <laughs> what? But like, well, like this. And in terms of the stunt, where you, <laughs> <Joel> is. <laughs> but guess, but you know, to be to be to be honest, and without giving any of it away. Of course. Of course, there was like more that I did in uh, in season two, and uh, there and and to basically be able to know that it's a gesture of the head, a, a posture. You can like your imagination can go totally. You can get right into believing what you're doing and believing the world that you're in and. And 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 serious like kid fantasy playtime kind of thing. It's awesome. Um, and then there's, I'm pretty sure, I need an MRI. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, can't really see. Right. Sometimes you can't breathe. Right. And. You know, if they want to hear, if they want to catch your dialogue, it's like a one of big mic pack that's like right, right, up right, 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 skull inside the thing, and when you take it on and off, about it challenges performance seventy times yeah. in one day, and there's like the constant sort of rubbed raw. It, it's you know, there's a physical aspect of it, yeah. and it's it's fascinating to be under. Um, uh, of a kind of physical stress, which I think so many actors, it, that's part of the, that's, that's, that's part of it. But for it to go into uh, a, such a complete version of that sort of experience, it was, it was challenging. Yeah. Just like, it reminds me of me, Joel, like uh season you can't, two, you can't put, you can't, I was you naked and I was, remember when Chang was all lubed up in an mm-hmm. air vent, mm-hmm. <laughs> similar mm-hmm. to the, similar to Mando. Yeah. I mean, and that was almost for Ken, that was almost seven minutes for you. And, uh, <laughs> And as Pedro alluded to, it's an entire very involved series where he's on set for hours and hours taking a very constricting helmet on and off, including technicals. But I get what you're saying, lubed up in a crawl lubed space. Up in a, that sounds great. It was great. Oh, my God. <laughs> it just took me to a whole new world of lubes and Vaseline and ointments. And I you get it. A- you got a sponsorship out of that. Like, I, think I, got, I did. It. I got a Vaseline. I got a Vaseline webisode out of it. It was Hi. great. It's Ken Jong for Joy Jelly. Hi. And are you? Yeah. You feeling chapped everywhere? Well, check out your boy. Hell. Vaseline lube jelly. Mm-hmm. Pedro, what's Werner Herzog Slip like? Slip slide. I know yes. you get it all the time, but Dude, Werner, Herzog, Werner Herzog. What's he like? Oh my God, I love his. God, I love him so much. He's he he would he he's completely game and completely like a kid you know and um and it was like having that um the guy that you could imagine with oh gosh i hate blanking what it was the the for the freaking brilliant actor that the 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 the, the notorious combination of Werner herzog and his leading actor the german uh Mm, mm, um, yes i know yeah yeah. i identify yeah uh, klaus Kinski? Klaus, Klaus, Klaus Kinski. Yeah, Klaus, Klaus Kinski. Um, and 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 whatever kind of trouble that they would get into, and just diehard filmmaker, 
he had that sort of young and enthusiastic energy um, on on the set, but he would also wrap himself, you know, when things were going too long. <laughs> I, I I have to tell you, Mandalorian, like, I'm uh, done. <laughs> I have a am, dinner reservation. I have dinner at, at the Soho House in Malibu. <laughs> Meeting up with John Stamos and Bob Saget. <laughs> and the grizzly bear <laughs> grizzly man is like my favorite documentary of all time Absolutely. and me and my wife have yeah. seen it so many times so when we saw Werner that is a fun there, one to see over never, and over again must dude. never listen to this must oh god listen, dude must it, never listen to this <laughs> I mean never listen. I'm listening now and you must never listen <laughs> okay Werner okay <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Who would have thought he was such a good, uh, you know, play-by-play man? He oh, he'd be uh, great in the game. NBA Finals, right? And John Stocks <laughs> shoots for three over Pippin. <laughs> John Stocks. Dude, he would be amazing. I, I think that, like, my favorite line in Grizzly Man was like, And this is where the bear is the murder. I mean, it was, <laughs> man, it doesn't get any better than that in any genre of filmmaking. I like how you and Tran are like, should we watch Grizzly no. Man again? Dude, <laughs> Tran and I, it's, it's like my wife and I, like no, we're, we're watch Breaking the Waves first and know, then we, we'll watch It's Grizzly so Man. weird. My wife and I, I mean, we quote Werner, like when we're dating, we were watching Grizzly Man. And so we, and she, because I could do impressions of everybody in that movie. And she'll like, when she's bored, hey, Tran, hey, you can just give me an impression of the, of the pilot who, who thought like, uh, who thought Timothy Treadwell was 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 like not smart? He goes, well, I think I think the Bears looked at Timothy Treadwell and said, hey, hmm, he might be good to eat. You know, <laughs> yeah. I know that movie by heart. It's amazing. It's, and then, but Werner, want, but he just fantastic perform. I, mean, I just thought, like, man, just to see him at the beginning of this was, I mean, it's such an eclectic cast. Like Bill Burr was outstanding in that. I mean, that to me, that's like how good the fucking show is. Like. Bill Burr, like that was comedically obviously my favorite episode when you when you had the, you know just just kind of like his old crew. I I yeah. loved everything Burr did, man. It was and just stunning. A, a sort of strange standalone ensemble uh, yeah. episode. Uh, yeah, yeah, they could they could have a whole Rick, other really show. Cool. Rick Fung, just, you, yeah, exactly. That game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, all right. So I, I get gonna... I get into such we're we're talking about it. I, I, know, I know. And I get into such a physical state of fear. <laughs> and and I I understand. Because I start because I'm like, respect. what will I say? No, that and we'll, we'll and make we're the chip not... in my brain go off and kill me. No, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you. Uh, okay, so you obviously starred with Mr. Matt Damon in The Wall. It's but you called also... the Great Wall. Yeah, the Great Wall, uh, the Wall Two, and uh, no, but then you were also uh, you played a maitre d in the Adjustment Bureau, also sure. a Matt Damon sure. film. Nice. Unfortunately, I was edited down in that. Uh, I, I, I there was incredible stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor of uh, the Adjustment Bureau. Right. So but to go what, from like what ended know, up in the movie was, I think. I'm in the background shot while while we're looking at John Slattery and Emily Blunt and Matt Damon are arriving to the maitre d. We did shoot. Welcome, Mr. Whatever his name was. Yeah, Mr. Adjustment Bureau. I was on camera for that, but what they ended up using was like a blurry figure on the other side of the glass from an interior shot was my feature <laughs> film debut yeah but then you go from blurry background guy to co-starring with yeah. the lead not just but you know do you know do you know Zhang Yimou do I yeah no, no not personally but do you know his movies I don't I, okay. I only watch I let only know your something. movies let me tell you something <laughs> I've only I, seen Kingsman let me tell you something real okay let me tell you something real Kingsman the Golden Circle yeah. <laughs> Kingsman 2. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, um, I even tried to get into film school when I was 18 years old and I didn't get in. I could only get into the theater programs with like monologue auditions and stuff like that. Um, because I, I really loved, I, you know, even as a, as a teenager, I started to get into independent film and international cinema. And it's like, you know, you get into Pedro Almodovar and then, you know, Lassie Hallstrom, My Life is a Dog. And there was one little art house theater on PCH that I'd walk to and I would go see Jenny Mo had this string of um, this muse period with this lead actress, Gong Li, and he made some of the best films in history. <laughs> wow. Okay. These, I they, didn't realize you know, you'd get... Okay. The, the Meryl Streep of China is this actress, Gong Li. Oh, yeah, Gong Li, I oh, know. Yeah. And guys, these, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe there's like six or seven movies in a row. Um, that starred her, that he that he directed, that you know, for, uh, best foreign language film at, uh, at the Oscar, uh, nominated um, mm-hmm. in one in one instance, like this 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 tiny movie that the uh, it's called Shanghai Tried, nominated for best cinematography, and no one had you know what it, uh, because it, the most beautifully shot, the most fascinating, the best acting, and uh, he's 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 a genius, and um, and 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 then I was in his. Uh, <laughs> Hollywood, uh, uh, the East, East tries to, um, uh, West tries to meet East, um, uh, experiment called the great wall alongside Matt Damon. Yes. Pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty good, like, that's amazing. But I was very, and the movie was a Matt. gigantic, I was very, very impressed to meet Matt. I was, I was really impressed to meet Willem Dafoe, but I was, I would say cast of community, Zhang Yimou. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I hear you. I agree. It's kind of up there. You yeah, know the, the movie, movie Hero? Do you know the movie Hero, House of Flying Daggers? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So after these really art house indie masterpieces, he moved into martial arts masterpiece um, uh, as well. He's, he's, he's a very prolific filmmaker. Okay. And the, and the movie was a huge hit in China. And you say, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not. That's I'm serious. I know that. Uh, I feel like you're just staring at me right now. That's yeah. fine. Okay. okay. I don't think so. I think he's just staring at his uh, home button on his iPad. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's just terrifying. You're reading too much into it. Joel's going to come in. You're reading too much point. into it because just because he's worked with your hero, Matt Damon, more than you. He's, well, you've only done one movie with Matt Damon. So well, you're just feeling a little insecure. That's so. true. That's how I met Joel. I met Joel at a at, at, at uh, Matt's wife's Lucy's uh, birthday party at a roller rink, and we were asked to dress up for the era. And of course, Joel had little bitty shorts on to show <laughs> off his muscular legs. Thank you. He loved the assignment of like, dressing up. Uh. I took an opportunity there. I took advantage. Yeah, tight, like 70s. He's like, I'm going to go 70s. That's like, amazing. You know, baby baby tees. Mm-hmm. Half shirt. And, and uh, you know, like a head, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a little headband there. Headband. He looked good. Yeah. He looked good. Wow, yeah, you should... Pedro, Pedro just dressed up like he was on Narcos. He just walked up. He just, <laughs> just like, I was like, you don't even try. You already have that. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, and that's that's the 80s. It's not even the 70s. It's the 80s. <laughs> just dressed as your guy. <laughs> and I wasn't invited. Now, um, <laughs> fine. What? No, you've met Matt, right? I've met Matt, and, yeah. Uh, well, I'm uh, sure that was like a good three-minute exchange. He made eye contact. Exchange. That's cool. I actually used your name. I actually used your name to meet Matt. <laughs> when I met Matt, and I just said, I know Joe McHale. And he just shrugs and then walks away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's True more story. to story. True story. <laughs> <laughs> He's the sweetest guy, the sweetest guy in the world. Oh, no, God. here we go. Here we go. Wait, wait. It was, it's great. Because you told me right before we started that he's a monster. Please edit this. I don't even know where this is coming from. Oh, we're like, I can <laughs> declare that oh, name in a Oh, I'm still in the game, Joel. Come on. You're ruining it for me. Whoa. He threw a cappuccino whoa. onto a PA and He's said, has done you two. You've done hot? one. I, where's mine? Whoa, yeah. whoa. If you're listening, whoa. <laughs> Language. <laughs> like to welcome Mr. Matt Damon to this podcast. Yes, yes. Yep. Well, we have him right here. Look, yeah, Andrew if you look Hobson. at our producer, he looks like Yeah, Matt we have him right there. Brother, so... so. Uh, How about them apples, as they like to say, right? Wow. 
Oh and man, I love Stockton. He definitely do look like Matt Damon. I know he does look like. It's pretty impressive. He does. <laughs> it looks really. <laughs> Everything he keeps on doing, it just makes him more and more Matt Damon. Yeah, <laughs> the way he's just quietly. Uh, we try to because cool. some of the fans, I mean, fans, community, well, fans, you're like an extension. Gone through my resume. We're done. We're gone. No, we haven't. We haven't. We have not gotten to your resume. We haven't talked about Wonder Woman. I don't know. See, we, have you shot that yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shot that a while ago. That Gal Gadot, not, not talented and not attractive. Not, Just not talented, not, not, not attractive, not nice. Not not cool. Not yeah. giving to people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was okay. real. It was it was tough. But thankfully, my my skin it was very thick by the time I got onto that set. Yeah. I had to deal, deal with that level of aggression. Insanity. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's we had a that, very similar experience with lines. Betty White on uh, Community <laughs> when she guest starred for two episodes. I bet. Not to jump timelines, but this, here we go. Someone asked on Twitter, you know, uh, what was your cameo in Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And because I was a big Buffy fan, and at, around that looked well, like it was that was like one of the, that was like one of my big jobs. Yeah, I was, I was so s- stoked about it. I I um, it's the beginning of uh, it was the season premiere of season four. Okay, and Buffy is going to college, so. She's graduated from the sunny, sunny day. Yeah, sunny, sunny Dale. Yeah, sunny Dale. And um, and it doesn't go well for her. She, some professor, sort of calls her out and humiliates her. And um, her roommate is, they don't get along. And it just, she's no longer, you know, she's out of her element. And she's, right. she's all, and her friends have all these things to do and she's all alone and then she finds herself lost on campus at night and then she bumps into me and I'm a bigger dork than she is and I'm lost as well but I have a map I remember it very perfectly oh my god that's, that's so amazing this 20 what years that that's 1990 that's 21 years ago dude and I remember that episode I was a big the first four seasons I was a huge Buffy I had and my wife knows I had the biggest crush on like Buffy at that time it's man the most it was popular thing that I got yeah. killed off like I didn't even make it past the first act he did a Uh-oh. good thing where he sets up this is Buffy's new friend this is the new this is the this is the the new guy who's going to be on the show right right <laughs> he's going to start out as a nerd but he's gonna somehow she's she's gonna realize, hey, actually he's kind of cute. Yeah, he's new angel. And then you I'm know? gonna start yeah. learning how to like dress better and stuff like that, and then you know become some kind of a romantic interest. But no, I uh, we finished that walk at night, and then I got <laughs> captured by vampires and uh, killed. And walked out the lot right there. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. That I Zoom love it. call ended early. Yep. It. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That was well, a good. Uh, it was a good misdirect, though, right? <laughs> it was a good misdirect, I think. It was like, oh, this is gonna Dead be like camp. Eddie. This is gonna be like Eddie, camp. I'm Eddie love. the freshman. The freshman. <laughs> Eddie the freshman. That was the name of the. Eddie the, the, the episode was called the freshman. Yeah, that was yeah. man. That was really that was that, that was, was the beginning of the, the the beginning of the long road. <laughs> And it ends with us at a podcast. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Seen by dozens of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a big, a big feather in your cap, Pedro. This will, you know, the feeling that you had when you walked out in New York and all of a sudden everyone had seen your Game of Thrones episodes and you're like, things are different. That's what this will be like. Uh, by the way, your your killer in Game of Thrones, he has broken the Guinness Book of World Record for powerlifting like a few days ago. That's what I, I know. Found. I yeah. know. It's when we shot. Did you ever the, talk to him? The, when we were in Croatia, uh, afterward, I think I saw him when they came in to do the final season premiere in New York. Yeah. And um, I, I saw him there. But when he came, uh, he flew into Croatia from China, where he was at a strongman competition. He came in. For, he came from a strongman competition in right. China to Croatia for us to rehearse together for a couple of days on the actual arena that we shot the scene in, and he had come in third. 
he was not number one. He was the you would third be. strongest man in the world. So he was, I was like, <laughs> is he going to be mad about this? Is he going to be mad or happy? Is he a glass yes. half full or a half is, empty guy when he comes on third set? Is good? Is third good? <laughs> That's a... Did That's that exceed some... your expectations or were you going for number and you, one? And you see him on set day one. Congratulations, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice if you look at that scene, the dialogue, uh, the prince is kind of like, I've seen stronger. <laughs> I, I know a couple guys. I mean, so this is not like no one's going to really care about me killing this guy. It was, there's the real context. Man. That is beyond intense. And on that note of intensity, man, I just thank you for even hanging out with us, man. This that is, is great. Time. Joe, just so enjoyable, man. It's Absolutely. really, um, it was, an, uh, in, you know, on behalf of everyone on Community, it was just, it was such a big thrill and an honor to have you a part of it. You will always be a part of our extended. It was a way bigger thrill for me, guys. It really, yeah. really, it, but traumatically so. It was. Uh, it was. <laughs> I will say this. Uh... When I said we were having you on, I told my boys, I was like, oh, we're having the Mandalorian on. The response compared when we were like, oh, Donald's going to do the table read. The kids were like, the Mandalorian. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, yes. And they were like, please say hello. Oh, and uh, they were just like this. Oh, Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> well, well, we're right. having Not for Fleetwood. The Fleetwood Mac, but just the cutoff head. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing the whole time we just talked. <laughs> Hold on, stay like that. Stay like that. Oh, Mandalorian. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, that is, Hold on. That is, everything I do, I should do like this from now on. Dude, that, dude every, every junket is always just like that. Exactly. That's yeah, exactly. just really great. Um, I really got yeah. to show more of myself in I, this. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. Finding different, I'm finding different ways to express myself. Yeah. I mean... You know, I find uh, that the shoulder shimmy. Yeah. Really what about kinda... the What about the plot twist in season two? Can't you tell by my shoulder shrug? I don't know. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. One uh, shrug. When you're one on shoulder set, shrug is, is actually I'm gonna get this too. <laughs> Both I'm of us. I'm taping this. We're we are like literal dorks right now. Thank and you, we're Mandalorian. Just thinking, this will this will be our promo. This will be our this will be our spot right here. Oh my God! Here it is, photographic evidence. The Mandalorian. <laughs> oh. I need a screenshot. Hey, okay, I'll say, I'm gonna end it with this. I'll end I it with this. Screenshot of you guys. Look up, Joel. Oh hi. <laughs> Am I allowed to do that? Last look. Last I'll look. Say this, uh, Pedro, uh, and and you're not. You're gonna be embarrassed. You're so great in the table rig. No, uh, in that. <laughs> As he's you gonna know, go like, back. He's gonna go back to his headless avatar. Th oh. There's only. It's so great. I'll say this, like it's so great when the good guy, the the good guy gets gets the famous. Is yeah. that uh, and, and you you've always been people. like way too nice, way too kind for what? And it's like oh, like when I saw you get the Mandalorian. Look at him right now. He's gonna listen. When I saw you get the Mandalorian, I was of course filled with jealousy, but at the same time, I was like oh. They got they got the they got the nicest man on the planet, and no, I he, don't say things no, like this no, a lot because with Ken, I don't I don't say anything like he's this. Never done. And what I'm dude, trying to dude, do is make your leading Pedro's on neck such muscle a violent bunch note. up to a point you have where no, his yeah. like a uh, like Pedro, a dude, Pedro, <laughs> dude, dude. <laughs> I did it! I did it! Wow! I oh my God! Killed the Mandalorian! <laughs> Look at that! He's just left with a knee stub. Look at that! Oh. Great! The golden circle. Yeah, great! Disney Plus is going to kill us now because he's just left with a knee. Great, Joel. Great. Well, Great Joel. Thank you. It'll fit. Amazing. Um, well, you guys are jerks. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And then as you got that right. I agree. We, I about that. <laughs> what are your plans for today? Uh, what has that gotten you? <laughs> Not enough. No. Not enough. We've got to be nicer. Can't you see the be... trophies behind him, Pedro? Look at that. <laughs> He's got uh, that thing from Nickelodeon. I have, uh, I've got a microphone. I have Tom Felton's TV Movie Award. I have, look at that. I, I, I beat Shaq and dropped the mic. Uh, little karaoke rap. Um, I have a uh, Spike Guy's Choice Awards 2010. 
been around, been around. Marathon, not a sprint. Marathon. Pedro's looking around <laughs> for awards. Marathon. It's a marathon, Pedro. <laughs> not a sprint. Hey, uh, so Pedro, we're going over to Matt Damon's house this weekend, and uh, I'll see you there. What do you? What time are you getting there? Like four thirty? Yeah, so you when, can it swim? There, when it's when it's a little cooler. You know, yeah, I appreciate. It. I can't. I want make, my kids to swim I can't a make bit. it. I'd love to be there. Thank you for the invite. Oh. I can't make it. I just I got a bronze. Oh no, we were not inviting you. Just letting you know what we just wanted to talk about. What time we're getting to Matt's house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, thank you. I really appreciate me being your plus one, but I I can't make it. And it's not like that kind just of got a this golden doodle, like a and we just got new kibble. I'm mean, very excited to feed our, our 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 doodle her new kibble. We're excited. We got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff, a lot of irons in the fire, and is this coming? Is this going great? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's me at every after party. <laughs> like, hey, what do you got going on? Oh, a lot of great. I got a pocket. <laughs> He's like golden doodle doodle. I'm Waggle. looking at Andrew right now. He's he's bored, dude. Andrew's it's, yeah, that's he's a good. He's side. looking for another painting to Look put that. I know, I know. And he's he decided to dress he just went like, like this with his pen. He's like, <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks like he's it looks like he's dressed for a callback for U.S. Marshals. Yes. <laughs> that's what he's in that, <laughs> that riverboat movie that uh, Bruce Willis starred in. That's really good. <laughs> That That's old. striking distance. Striking. That's right. Yeah. Striking distance. Striking right. distance. Bruce Willis and Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. Hobson is a cinema. Hobson knows the cinema. Hobson is a big cinephile dog. He's amazing. So, anyway. Yeah. No, no. Hobson's going to. Ha- he's told it. He's coming to the party uh, tomorrow at Matt's house. On, uh, we'll talk I, about it at Matt's. I, I, well, I appreciate that. Guys, I got. Uh, my calendar's full. Oh, my God. I need some daylight on my calendar. I just, oh, that's I, cool. There will be another. There will be another one. I can't. I don't think I can make it to that one. When is it? <laughs> <laughs> you already. Oh, what a weird. <laughs> aggressive. Now you're not. Okay. Well. Seriously, thank you, Pedro. Thank you well, for well, trusting us. And being fun. I, I, I've gotten comfortable with this, and I'm <laughs> sort of enjoying myself. So I'd like to stay uh, All right. for the rest of the day. I don't. Um, I'm alone here, and uh, <laughs> when I. Uh, when I hang up with you guys, Matt, you know, I think I just, yeah, I think I'll just, I don't know, just keep the camera on, do your thing. I'm just gonna be, just, okay. I'm just gonna stick around. I literally do these, in, do this in people's yards. I have no pride anymore. I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm. If you want to go back inside, I think I'm just gonna stay here. <laughs> what do we do? No, you don't. You don't leave the meeting. You're just gonna say, all right, well, that was. Uh... That was the show. That's what we'll do. Like this is the we'll wrap it up here, and be like this will be the yeah. first time we'll wrap it up with, with the guest. guest. This is the first no, time we can't follow. Yeah. We can't follow this. This is how good. Oh, this so is. I get to stay? Yes, <laughs> you get to stay. And now okay, we'll but I don't have to talk. I don't have to talk anymore though. No. All right, cool. I like it. So, uh, Ken, Joe, that was a ton of fun. This was. Beyond. Pedro is a man. She totally combed his hair for it. Yeah. And, uh, I, I guess, I, but I, you know, like, I, 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 <laughs> it was so great to talk about <laughs> But that We're was not Andy Leibowitz, all right, Pedro? We don't know. We're not, we don't, wow, look at, the, look at that. Look man, at is that Pedro Pascal or is that my golden doodle on a Snapchat filter? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, it's sexy. I won't lie to you. <laughs> oh, well, that was. <laughs> and he froze in spot. He froze in place. That's yeah. it. He That's how perfect he is. He freezes in he place. Freezes in like a perfect. He I got mean, the biceps in. It was not nice. right. No, that's just not right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Ken, so, I can't think of a better way to end. I this want to do this just... again next week, and obviously, I'll see you over another Zoom chat, and I'll see. Pedro tomorrow at Matt Damon's house. Guys, I can't make it. Again, I really appreciate it. I, 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 it means so much to me, and just uh, I, I really am honored. But I, I can't make it. I re- I'm so busy. You have no idea, dog. My name is Ken, and I'm here to say I like to rap in a very cool way. My name is Ken, and I'm here to say I like to rap in a very cool way. Hip hop, hip hop. Right here.
here, dog. We right here, dog. Rough, rough. I used to be a doctor. Used to be a, used to be a, used to be a doctor. I used to be a doctor. Still technically licensed to practice, but. Semantics. 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 Motherfucker.